Hey guys, Dream Envoy here, and welcome back to more of Let's Play Winds of Change. Guess what? Turns out that if I click preference here, I could have adjusted the volume perfectly. I have the music volume lowered a little bit so it doesn't overpower uh, the uh, voices of the characters, but I'm still able to enjoy the music somewhat. Anyways, um, we got here and ended up, uh, meeting Pro and Aaron. Unfortunately, Aaron isn't exactly pleased with my decision that he should, uh, give up his bar to, um, for the war effort. And I'm like, mm, my argument is protecting the nation as a whole is more important than protecting an individual's business. I know that it's his livelihood and I understand that he's going to care more, that he's going to care a lot about it, but I know it just seems kind of selfish for me that he would risk the lives of other, that he would sacrifice the defenses of other people just to maintain a business that, um, as they previously mentioned, wasn't really that successful in the first place, which... Yeah, it makes sense. It's right in the middle of the forest. But we are given an opportunity to um, see some character interactions before we move on, so let's begin. Uh, first of all, let's talk to Pro here. Hey. Hey. So, how did you come to join the Rebellion? I joined shortly after the occupation. The previous leader recruited me. It seems that children with revenge on their minds was in both high demand and supply. I grew up with Dominic and a bunch of other kids our age. They trained us all in war. Huh, so you began as a child, huh? Ulrich joined a little bit later. He's older and was already trained. As you could have guessed, I lost my family during the occupation. A common tale as of late. But we're finally ready to take on the Triumvirate. We'll take back the future they stole. What can you tell me about Dominic? I like to talk more about specifics. What do you think about Ulrich? More th hmm. What can you tell me about Domic? Well, I already know. Um, about Ulrich. Tell me about Domic. He's a really nice guy, and we've shared a lot of the same struggles. There's no one else I'd rather march into battle with. I mean it. His tactics, his strategy. It's really something else. Watching him on the war table is nothing short of an honor. I can't wait to get an interview with the guy. His story needs to be told. After this all blows over, I'm sure he'll go down in history as a hero. Do you think he's a capable leader? Are the other rebels embracing his leadership? What are his plans when we arrive in Mazeo? You think they'll take down the Triumvirate? This is important. He's been obsessed with these underground tunnels lately. He wants our headquarters to be hidden and well guarded. I think he's trying to strike a deal with the mayor of Mazeo. Yeah, we've seen scenes of that, but I guess it makes sense. Thing is, he plays it right outside the guard, but at least the Triumvirate Grand Guard was um, taken care of pretty swiftly. That means the mayor is defecting from the Triumvirate. That's good. We have a huge advantage as long as that secret isn't leaked. But there's something else he's been talking about as well. In the same tunnels he wants to claim, he discovered a spirit idol. Mm -hmm. A massive one, flowing with unfathomable amounts of energy. I think he wants to tap into it with that blade and use that power. Yeah, I've heard about that as well. Though that is a little bit concerning to me. You're living proof that idols can empower people, right? If we could do that to our army, we'd be almost unstoppable. Yeah, that's true, but I'm kind of concerned about the rest. Do you think he's a capable leader? Do you think they'll take down the Triumvirate? Did you not hear what I just said? I mean, of course he is. He's the best. Not only capable, but exceeding expectation. Uh, there's this, um, jerk outside my 
home um, honking his horn for some reason. Um, hope that doesn't pick up in the microphone. If it does, I'll try my very best to cut it out. But yeah, that's kind of funny. And oh, 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 dude, I didn't mean to make you upset. With the right strategy and that special blade, of course. I'm just glad that Domic is the best strategist I've ever seen. Then there's you. I'm not so sure about you yet. Hmm. Actually, back when he said, did you just hear, didn't you hear what I just said? It makes me wonder if there's like secret dialogue for, um, you know, because I've played some games before where if you say one thing and then um, ask and then go back to a previous option, they'll give you a different answer as um, there's a little bit of, you know, it's just, it, I just think that's um, interesting. Uh, did I explain that well? You know, like, you have these set of options, one would lead into the other, but um, if you do them in like a certain order, you can unlock like secret dialogue that you wouldn't hear otherwise. I wonder if that thing where Pro said, did you just, didn't you hear what I just said? Um, when he says that, it makes me wonder if that was a secret dialogue or something. With the right training, I think you'll be fine. So that's what we'll do when we get to Mazeo. Train. And no complaining about the hours. The fate of Alestia is at stake. Well, yeah, I understand that. I like to talk about more specifics. Oh, sure. What'd you want to talk about? Lost my family in the occupation too. Well, yeah, it seems like that's something that everyone has gone through. Have you enjoyed your time with the rebellion? Where do you think you'd be without the occupation? Were you part of the? This is seems like an interesting question. Probably somewhere a lot safer than Mazeo, working on my next big hit. I'd be a totally different person, too. The last ten years were spent on training. It's almost impossible to find time to myself, you know? Big hit. But most importantly, my family would still be here. I always wondered what kind of people they'd turn out to be. So, without the occupation, I'd probably stick by their side. Naturally, I'll end up saying this. Showing the club. Almost everybody lost a family member during the occupation. At least it helps you relate to the others. You're not alone in this. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine tackling this struggle all by ourselves. Yeah, true. Have you enjoyed your time? Were you part of the Exodus raid? Not really. At least, not in the way you'd think. It was all about reconnaissance for me. Staying on the high ground. I mapped out a lot of Balteus, so our leader could come up with a plan. Balteus? When they raided the Triumvirate's castle, I stayed far behind. They made sure that nobody got in my way, and I mapped the castle too. We're gonna take advantage of that map when we attack them again. Good, so at least we have a little bit of a strategy with uh, blueprints, or floor plans and all that. I saw the corpse of our leader as Dama carried it out. It was horrible. After that, he buried it underneath Mazeo in those tunnels he likes. But with that blade and the castle plans, one final attack is all we need. Hmm. I wonder if the later soul um, became those suit of armors. This is just a stupid question. I won't ask that. Yeah, no, I could. Um, ask every single question, but you know what? I like to be realistic. How long have you been here at Peregrino? What can you tell me about yourself? Let's start with like relationships. Well, I'm a bit of a gambler. I love to take risks and have them pay off. Uh, aside from that, I like to write. Woo! I fancy myself an author, I guess. After this war, maybe I'll get to focus on that a little bit more. I've been trying to write my own story myself. What kind of stuff do you like? 
Non-fiction, mostly. I like to chronicle the stories of important people. So, and this is just an example, but yourself and Domic, <laughs> you'll go down in history. But you need to be real, not a legend. I see, so you're gonna... So you'll be writing, um, things like biographies and all that. That's pretty cool. Though I'm more of a um, fantasy writer myself. Like I said, I hope to write more stuff when this war is over. I don't exactly have much time to myself, even on the best of days. It's hard for the other rebels to find time too. I need to eavesdrop. Sounds like you want an interview, pro? Do you really think you can chronicle everything? Do the rebels seem to mind your spying? Any juicy secrets or interesting facts about the rebels? Nothing I can tell you. An author never spills his secrets. If someone else can tell my stories, then what's the point? I take these to the grave. Or at least until I publish them. Ah, you got a good point. Of course not. I mean, they never see me, so they can't be mad. I'm not being creepy or anything, just listening in here and there. It'll be a lot easier to do in our new HQ, though. <laughs> Wait till you see it. Just keeping an eye open. Or rather, an ear open, I should say. I'm not sure, actually. Maybe I'll focus on my writing career. But I'd need to retire somewhere nice and free of distraction. Maseo is just so busy, it's hard to focus on anything. I understand. Maybe I'll find someone special and bring them along. This is all up in the air, of course. A lot could change. I probably shouldn't plan it out. I'll play it by ear. Uh, plan it out. I think that it's important to set goals. Plan it out and, you know, if things don't work out, you know, just so just your plans. Any places that you'd like to retire? I'd say Valinorth, but I don't think that's going to happen. Maybe Balteus, if I can get used to the cold. It seems quiet there. When the Triumvirate is taken down, we can settle there for once. Eh, huh, interesting. So, Balteus uh, is um, where that Triumvirate castle was, where we... You know, saw all those scenes with Sylvia and such. And what do you think about the uh, Triumvirate? Not much, to be honest. But probably more than most. I pride myself on picking up weird information. And if you're talking weird, they really fit the bill. <laughs> I know, talking in unison and all. And being mysterious. Yeah. Do you think they're truly evil? Tell me more about their history. Or do you think they can um, do you think Elastia would be better off without them? This is a good question. It seems like it. But there's no way to know for sure. You've never been under anyone else's lead, right? I imagine it'll be chaotic at first until we figure things out. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Um, being under one rule for so long, um, and not having any history of anything else, it really limits your, um, ideas of how you, you know, should govern yourselves. It's not a turnkey operation. We're talking about ruling a world. Domic, or whoever ends up taking charge, will have to learn a lot. After that... You just have to hope that the people accept new rulers. Mm hmm Their rule goes really far back. Like, we don't know about a time without them. A lot of people in Alestia consider them gods, and say they created our world. But there's no way to know for sure. They never answer questions like that. Hmm. I get a feeling that they didn't. It's really rare that they come out of their chambers. I've never seen it happen. And I'm starting to wonder if I ever will. I bet that's where we'll take them down. We've tried to lure them out, but it never works. They see right through our tricks. 
Where did they come from? How old are they? What do they look like? Are they really gods? I'm not really sure that gods exist. At least, not in the conventional sense. It's almost like that blade is a god. It has the ability to repurpose our spiritual energy. That's how they make their army, right? Maybe they used it to gain immortality, too. Hmm. If that's true, then where did the blade come from? I'm terrified just thinking about it. What is that thing? I'm terrified that the blade even exists. Well, we both got these options. Since we don't know how old they are. Like they said, they believe that there's a possibility they could be as old as the world itself. Where did they come from? That's also an unknown. What do they look like? We have no idea. We just know about their cloaks. They're given an affectionate nickname. White cloaks. They wear these beautiful white robes trimmed with gold. But we never seen their faces. They almost look like empty robes. When I first saw them, I thought their robes kind of looked empty to me. Kind of like that blade you've got on your back. Leads more credence to the theory that they created it. Kind of ironic, isn't it? Being killed by their own creation. Do you really think they're truly evil? Yeah, yeah, I guess it... Well, yeah, we'll just see your opinion on it. I don't think any ruler is truly evil. The needs of a world and its people are always changing. I think they're out of touch on what Alestia needs right now. Or they could just be super selfish. That's also a bit, that's also a possibility, like, hmm. Um, the way I define evil is just, you know, you act more out of selfishness rather than generosity. That's how I would mostly define evil. There's not like an absolute evil. I think that good and evil is more like a, a huge gray area. But I do know that some leaders tend to take, act more selfishly and therefore I would say that they would be uh, more evil, i.e. dictators and such. And in their heads, I'm sure they consider themselves good. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they have a reason for all the terrible things they've done. I know the Rebellion sure does. Our hands aren't exactly clean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thing is, like you said, not everyone knows um, what's actually good for the world. So that's um, everything that I wanted to tackle. Let's save some interactions. Zamira and... That's his name, right? Zamira and Pro. Oh, hey Zamira. It's good to see you again. I was starting to worry you might... Oh, come on now. There's no need to worry about me. I'd worry about Valinorth. There's no more gate guard. Oh yeah, I guess that was your job. I'm glad to see that you got everything done. Did you, uh, happen to touch that sword by any chance? No. Absolutely not. I kept it under wraps the entire time. We put it in the Grand Tree for safekeeping. Whew. Good idea. I'm just really curious. Domek was able to use it, however briefly. And not only that, but he had a vision too. Hey, so did us. Yeah, I was wondering about that. Didn't you guys find a new spirit idol in Mazale? Yep. Yeah, I think he wants to harness it for power. I didn't stop to ask, but it's all he talks about now. Well, isn't it inside your new HQ? Yeah, now that you mention it. Didn't Damak frequent those underground tunnels? Maybe he was exposed to some level of spiritual energy. At least, enough to let him have a vision or something. I don't think that's how it works. Yeah, or else everyone who is being exposed to the idols would have visions. It's a possibility. At least give me that much. That blade challenges all of our understandings. Alright, your theory has merit. It's really odd, but it makes sense. Can you even imagine if it was true? 
Maybe that's why Damek wants to harness its power. Giving regular people visions? He'd have an army of seers. There's no way the Triumvirate could fight against that. Well, that's his plan, isn't it? Whoa. Hey, how'd you learn about this stuff anyway? Is it not common knowledge? I overheard a few things, that's all. No one is leaking intel or anything. Good. We can't have any moles. The rebellion, as it is, currently hangs on threads. It's only thanks to that anomalous blade that we stand a chance. Mm -hmm. Um, I wasn't calling the plan common knowledge. Jeez, I hope it's not common knowledge or Alf. The triumph triumvirate would, you know. They could prevent that. Or at least try. But, yeah, I mean, like, the common knowledge that... You know, um... Yeah, Triumphant would not stand a chance against Sears. Hey, you were working with the Seer? Yeah, something like that. It lasted all a couple hours. What do you think about him? Hmm, something to listen into. I honestly have no idea. It's hard to believe that our fate rests upon one person. I don't think I could put my faith in somebody that way. Why not? Well, I can I can really blame Samira. I am. I mean, I'm just one guy. It's a big gamble, isn't it? Too risky. I agree with Samira. I know that, you know, you're doubting me, but I still agree with you. Yeah, but faith is all about risk. You believe in spite of overwhelming odds. You fight, even when everything tells you to stop. Hmm. You don't have to agree, but it's true. Without faith, the rebellion wouldn't even be here. Alessia would remain under the Triumvirate's grasp forever. Hmm. I want to say that it's so much as faith, so more so that it's hope. You have a point, Ulrich. It's impressive that you've come this far. And we still have a long way to go. But we won't get there if people don't believe. Have a little faith in us, alright, Zamira? Well, I can't say no to that. Just don't let me down, alright? When we make it through this, I'm buying drinks. Hmm. Just don't let it be blind faith, because if I fail <laughs> and you um put all your eggs in one basket and that basket is me and i fail <laughs> you're all going to die because of me oh you mean you aren't buying right now and here i was buttering you up for nothing oh my god ulrich hmm this icon is that like a fight or something can you believe domek's nerve don't worry he knows what he's doing he wouldn't act outside of Alestia's best interests. Whatever he's planning, I trust him. Even if it means losing my tavern? <sighs> Don't be selfish. I can't change my outlook. Sorry. All right. At least you can relate to me a little. Without Valinorth, your job is gone too. Yeah, looks like we'll both be unemployed. Maybe we could look for a new job together. We're all going to Maseo, right? Hmm. Uh, stay positive. Yes, I understand that you're losing your jobs, but they are losing your jobs for the what I believe is the greater good. It's the closest place to go, but I think the pirates have the monopoly on that place. You think the new Rebel HQ will have a tavern at all? Beats me, but I know Maseo has one. When we get there... How about we scout it out, start looking in your comfort zone, and then branch out? I agree. Yeah, that's a good idea. Now, thanks, Zamira. You're a good guy. I hope you can find a new job as well. I hope you both find new jobs. I might ask Damik if he has any openings. I don't need money, just food and a place to live. He's offering that to everyone from Valinorth. Uh, you can exchange money for food and a place to live. I guess he really is a nice guy, but he's taking Peregrino away from me. It's hard to side with someone like that, you know? Well, here's the thing. Would you rather have a bar? Would you rather be unemployed and have a possibility of being 
re-employed later on? Or would you rather be dead? I understand. Don't worry. Everything will work out. We'll need more barkeeps when this is all over. Really? Mm, yeah, I think so. More people celebrating. Yeah, of course. Imagine the celebrations when we win. Yeah. This isn't permanent. You'll be fine. Exactly. I like that. Hmm? It's like on day to go away. This party banter is affected by your choice to turn Bear Peregrino into a barracks. Oh, that's the indication. So, like, if I uh, chose differently, then this will be a different conversation, obviously. All right. All right. I'm sorry that this is just one location, but um, I honestly think that I'll finish off these two scenarios and that will be the end of the video. Sorry, I'm keeping it to just one location. Ooh, a ship! Sophie looked at the sea, taking in every detail of the near-infinite expanse. Still processing the earlier revelations, he gritted his teeth, annoyed. Why did the Triumvirate wait so long to tell him these secrets? Master, are you okay? Of course. There it is again, that dismissive tone. I can tell when something is wrong, you know. There's no need to lie, I'm your apprentice. It's nothing, Halen. I think it has to do with what happened earlier. The Triumvirate told you something, didn't they? You're not taking it well. I could tell the entire time. Very perceptive. Leave me alone. Sovi, you're acting like a child. He lets out a deep sigh as his apprentice hounds him for information. It was true, but Sovi didn't want to admit it. He was too prideful. Please tell me. I want to help you, Sovi. I stand by your side, no matter what. Hmm. This is surprising to see Helen, uh, truly care for Sovi for once. Are you sure about that, Helen? Of course. You don't have to tell me what they said, Sovi. But at least tell me what you're feeling. Sovi took note of Helen's sudden empathy. It was abnormal and somewhat unwelcome. Yeah, I had that feeling too. It definitely is abnormal. What had changed in the last few hours? They told me something I wasn't ready to hear. I'm sorry I forgot about you. And I'm sorry for being cross. My thoughts are muddled, Halen. And I'm confused. How do you plan to deal with that? For the first time in a while, I don't know. My purpose was always clear, my resolve unwavering. I'm starting to feel like my previous master, before my promotion. You never did tell me what happened to him. No, I didn't. Very well. At least tell me about this purpose of yours. I fight to ensure the reign of the Triumvirate. Our gods! A very clear purpose, and noble to some. For me, things have always been a bit... different. I fight to ensure the reign of Celestia's true rulers. Then what's the issue, Master? It would seem that we share the same purpose. Sophie sighed again, and slumped his shoulder slightly. Until now, Everything had been an act to intimidate Shane. Helen could tell that Sovi was displacing his true emotions. Normally, I would agree with you. But now? Now, I'm not so sure. Hmm. It's pretty darn alarming and that, that the triumvirate might be changing Sovi's view. Grizz! 
After arranging everything with Dominic, Grizz returned to his office. He had a lot to do, working with both the Rebellion and the Triumvirate. Though his true allegiance was with the Rebels, he had to keep up appearances. That meant trying to strike an allegiance with the most unexpected of factions. No, Alex, you have it all wrong. I only want you to pretend that you're helping the Triumvirate. When the time comes, you'll turn on them and help Domek instead. Alex, huh? You know Nada will never let this happen, right? Oh, whoa, whoa, that is some bright red there. Huh. So, who's Nada? I don't care what she thinks. I'm asking you. I have no doubt in my mind. A battle is coming to Mazeo. The Triumvirate will send their forces here for that new idol. I don't know what they want with it, but we need to strike immediately. You'll meet them at the docks and tell them you've been hired to assist. As soon as you get the chance, you'll sabotage the ships and kill them all. Okay, so the Triumvirates already know about the new idol. That's kind of unfortunate. That is, except for one ship. Domek will need one to launch his attack on Balteus. Alright, I'll humor you for a moment. Even if I play along and your rebellion comes to rule Alestia, they'll lift the trade bans, effectively ruining piracy for good. Why should I fight to kill my own profession? There are much better things to do in this world, Alex. I could pay you with anything you wanted, or any job you wanted. Just name it, and I'll make it happen. These are dire times, you know. Hmm. Yeah, but isn't the whole reason why piracy it began in the first place would because would it um pay more than any regular job? Basically, um, if you want the pirates to be on your side, um, offer them more money and something more exciting than well piracy. I doubt this offer extends to the rest of our crew. I'd love a reward and a new job, but not if it screws them over. They'll be doing the bulk of the fighting, not me or Nada. That is, if I can even convince them to do this. One of our core tenets is that we don't take sides. Even when the victor is clear? Even so, during the occupation, we fought for our own survival. Both the Triumvirate and the citizens of Mazeo attacked us. I see, so you're kind of independent from the whole conflict. We worked for decades to unite the pirates into what they are today. Doing this will split them apart again. You'll make an enemy out of Nada. She's pretty much the leader, and her influence is immeasurable. Aren't you already, um, kind of enemies since, you know, you're pirates? I'm well aware of that, and I've taken it into consideration. A divide in your numbers will still give me the right amount of men. You can show the rest of the pirates they're on the wrong side of this. Any divide that comes, I'm sure we can mend it. Besides, Domek hasn't said he's going to harm piracy. I'm sure we can come to some sort of deal, Alex. No matter what the deal is, you can't win over everybody. As soon as the Triumvirate falls, you'll have another war lined up. Hell, they might even join the White Cloaks out of spite. Hmm. Actually, hold on. Um, I did watch an old vid a video recently talking about the Golden Age of Piracy, and from my understanding, wasn't that a whole thing about that Golden Age is that um, the countries ended up hiring a whole bunch of people to rob ships. Um, during times of war, and then when the war ended, the pirates, these people were, these sailors, had basically two choices. Either the legal choice, which was to return home and end up with a lower paying job and less exciting job, or break the law and continue on with their piracy. And that's why I said earlier that if you really want the pirates to be on your side, you need to offer them something pretty darn high pain. And, I mean, using the pirates now, you can, you know, 
have them, you know, attack the ships at the Tori Emperor's ships, which seem to be what you're planning to do, um, right now. But the thing is, if it's gonna be like in real life, uh, once the war is over, they're just gonna go right back to piracy. The illegal stuff, I mean. I'm willing to take the risk, but I'll do my best to make sure they're satisfied. There will be a place for everyone in our new Alestia. <sighs> I'm just saying, that's... <sighs> I mean, like, in a realistic scenario, you're basically telling the pirates that you're going to be paying them. You have to offer the pirates a lot. The pirates are in a great position to make demands. Mm -hmm. As the mayor of Mazeo, I can give you anything you want. There's no way Nada could turn an offer like that down. Even as mayor, you still have your limits of what you can and can't do. Very well. Let's talk terms. <sighs> well, I mean, in the end, at least they agreed to it. Anyways, um, sorry to keep it all in one area, but I really don't want to make this too long of a video. Anyways, if you like this part, regardless, um, go ahead and hit that like button. Leave behind a comment if you would like, and if you want to see more, I suggest subscribing and hitting the bell icon to stay notified. See you guys next time.